Well, Jesus, we thank you for your body broken for us. So we break this bread this morning, giving you thanksgiving because you're wonderful. We're glad you would die on the cross and take a terrible beating so that we could walk in health. It's our desire just to activate our imagination and our memory this morning and remember what you did for us. So we eat this in remembrance of you. Thank you. We was, thank you for our new teeth. Thank you for our, uh, my wife's new digestive system and spine. And anything else new that she wants. We don't want to leave any of those body parts in that room in heaven that we can access. So we just say thank you that they're ours right now. So we just believe that they, they belong to us. So we just receive them now. delighted, Lord, that you shared your life with us. So we drink this cup this morning, proclaiming your death, coming in agreement with your word, that by the stripes of Jesus, by his shed blood, he entered into the holy place once and obtained eternal redemption for us. So we rejoice in that, we rehearse that, we remember that this morning. We drink this cup fresh and new, declaring that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And that we say yes to your marriage proposal. And we thank you for paying the price. Continue Second Thessalonians. chapter 2. Um, uh, and we're talking about the, I thought we finished. the man of sin, really. I'm trying to remember if we read 17. 217. 217. I don't think so. Paul is, he's uh, trying to comfort the hearts of the Thessalonians because someone has either written them a letter or came and uh, announced to them that the day of the Lord was over and they missed it. Right. And so they were very upset apparently. So he's assuring them that the day of the Lord is not going to occur until the man of sin is revealed. Um, and so we get, let's pick up in verse um, 8. He, he tells uh, 
he tells the Thessalonians that this man of sin will not be revealed until the Holy Spirit is taken out of the way. Now, he doesn't say Holy Spirit. He, said, he just says, He that restraineth him. So, apparently, once the Holy Spirit is gone, then Satan is going to have his way on the earth in full. Verse 7, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now hindereth will continue to hinder until he be taken out of the way. And most Christians believe that that's the rapture. And then shall that wicked one be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Talking about his second coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness, of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that, that they all might be judged, who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. So apparently, when the Holy Spirit is gone, and then this man of sin is revealed, apparently some big deception is going to be revealed. And then God is going to uh, give them over and send them strong delusion that they would believe the lie. Did you say great? Or did you not, say not wait? Great. I said not wait. Really. Did you say wait? It's terrible. It's <coughs> there's people are believing so many lies already. Oh. Can you imagine? What, what are they going to believe now? Well, some people say that this is talking about the alien gospel that uh, Satan's going to have motherships appear in the sky, and and they're going to say that. We are the we are the people we are the aliens and we seeded the human race uh, thousands of years ago and now we've come back you've you've uh, messed up your whole everything and so now we're going to come back and get you all straightened up and we're going to change your genome your DNA sequences are no, no, thank you. are off kilter so if we'll just take this uh, uh, mark in your hand and your forehead. It will change your genome, and or whatever. There's all kinds of. Sorry. There's. No, thank you. There's all kinds of speculations as to what this 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 delusion, this deception that Satan is going to whip out in the last days. There's probably clues though in the in the Bible of what it actually is, don't you think? Well, Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah. So shall it be again in the days of the Son of Man. And in Noah, in those, in that's what the fallen angels were doing. They were, they were messing with the DNA and messing with the human genome. I mean, what the delusion will be? Um, the delusion will be we can make you better. Uh huh. Miss Aaron says part of the delusion is. That they will discover how to blood, how to trace ancestry through blood type, and they'll be able to sequence you as to who your ancestors were, where you came from, down to the the day and the week and the whatever. Okay. And in some of the dreams, uh, the Jewish the Jewish people are gathered and told to come back to Israel. And they will receive an enormous sum of money if they will come back to Israel and take their place. And then all the peoples of the earth will be encouraged to go back to their homeland or whatever. Why? Or something. I don't know. I'm just telling you that the Jews go back to their homeland and they're given this enormous sum of money to go back. 
and then Satan has them all in one basket, so to speak. And he, he uh, starts to wipe them out. Anyway, all, all we know is from this passage, in verse 9 it says, uh, Him whose coming is after the working of Satan, talking about the Antichrist, with all power and signs and lying wonders. So it will just be things that are that will amaze and stun the whole world. Now I I think um, I personally think that Hollywood and the movies and the internet uh, people and the video game manufacturers mm -hmm. have been preparing the psyche of man to receive these things. So we've seen, we've probably seen what this is going to be already in movie form. And Satan's just going to bring it out for real. And people will go, well, he must be God then. Because look, you know, he, okay. he solved this problem and that problem. There's no more. He's, he, there's, Fukushima is okay. You know, or... Uh, the sun is going to go back and do its thing it's supposed to do. Anyway, he's going to, for a short time, he's going to do some things that will make people think. And it says here that God is going to help them. He's going to give, send them strong delusions. They should believe the lie. That they, that they all might be judged who believe not the truth. And what's the truth? God is good. God is good. The bad. Uh -huh. The truth is, God is good, and He sent Jesus, and He rescued the whole human race. But they said, "No, oh no, we're not going <laughs> to. No, we're not going to believe that. No, we're going to. We don't want the gospel. We don't want to be forgiven. We don't want to live in harmony with everybody." who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. They had pleasure in believing that they weren't healed. They weren't forgiven. They weren't. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's uh, what they were accepted. Happy about Well, that's what it says. Their pleasure is in unrighteousness. Even their pleasures in self hatred. Their pleasure is in pleasure, lust, and gluttony. Not, I'm so happy I'm doomed. Unrighteousness. Just phrase it right. Unrighteousness doesn't mean adultery. Well, the word righteous means to be in right standing. So they took pleasure in not being in right standing. Right. They took pleasure in not being in right standing. It's they a huge difference. In other words, they rejected the offer of Jesus. They rejected the offer of God. Yeah. And then it led to all what you're talking about. But that's not the point. Nobody goes to hell because of their sin. They go to hell because they reject the payment for sin with a capital S, which was when mankind was separated from God by Satan and his lying to Adam and Eve. It's not about your behavior. It's about your standing. It's about jurisdiction. <laughs> Just like everything <laughs> is about jurisdiction. It's all about standing. Well, think of it, think of it this way, honey. Um, God, it says, I don't understand how it is. God gave the Pharaoh Courage. courage to to stand against him and go ahead and do all ten of those, go through all ten of those plays. Because <coughs> nobody, I mean, humans are basically chickens, I guess. So who who could do such a thing? He, he gave him. He stood in his pride 
and sentenced all of his people to endure, endure slow and painful death. Father, we want to declare to you this morning that we take pleasure in righteousness and what you did for us. That's, what, that's our pleasure. We want to rehearse and rejoice and declare fresh and new this morning uh, that we believe that Jesus died for the whole human race and that he included us in his sacrifice. And that is, that is the best news I've ever heard. <laughs> I can almost remember the day I heard it back in 1977. But I can remember being amazed. I had heard that Jesus died on the cross, but I never knew why. I always thought it was such a tragedy to hear this great guy, they killed him. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, he was such a great guy and they killed him. I was they like, killed what? him four times in a row. I was like, what a tragedy. And then to find out that he died for me, it was just, it was overwhelming. It was, I was so amazed. That you, you did all that for me? What love? What, what love is that? the whole human race, but, you know, back there, I thought, oh, I thought it was just for, I don't know what I thought. I, I was confused. The whole thing confused me. I, I didn't get it. I just thought it's, I didn't get religion or church anyway. I thought it was stupid. But when you find out the truth, that Jesus loves us, and that he died for us. And that you're, Father, you have been, for 2,000 years, you've been trying to tell us that we have been set free. That there's nothing that separates us from you. <laughs> that you made one new man out of the Jews and the Gentiles. And that we are included in all the promises. That we have been grafted in to the vine. We have been grafted into the olive tree. And we are now bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. And your desire is to prepare a place for us so that we can be with you forever. And I just, we can just hardly wait, Father, for this thing to get kicked off and the events start to rush toward the culmination of the ages. Uh, I can almost feel the excitement. We know that things are, are just spinning faster and faster all over the planet. Mm -hmm. the, the, the evil people are being more evil than they ever have before <laughs> as in a grand scale and publicizing it and bragging about it and I guess all of our lives, things have been done basically. All the evil people sort of did it in private. Well, now they're publicizing it and inviting others to join them. They're getting more brave. And all these uh, evil people in the, the Muslims are, are multiplying and starting to cause havoc in, in many, many nations around the earth, starting to rape and pillage and kill uh, people by the thousands and the hundreds of thousands. So Father, our desire is to draw near to you this morning. And we say, Lord, here we are. What do you want us to do? How can we facilitate the coming of your kingdom? What can we do to bring your will to pass? We want to do whatever you've called us to do. Now, we know there's people all over the planet doing all kinds of things. We think of guys like uh, Franklin Graham or, or uh, Reinhard Bonnke or uh, uh, 
Heidi Baker, or there's just, you know, Andrew Womack. Different people are doing all kinds of different things. Some of them are preaching. Some of them are teaching. Some of them are missionaries. Some of them are uh, involved in uh, physical works, uh, feeding the poor and the homeless and taking care of this. And, and all, you have all these people doing all these things. Lord, we want to do our part. Show us what we're supposed to do uh, if it's different than what we're doing now. Uh, we want to inc increase. We want to be a blessing uh, to those around us. We want to be found faithful to do what you've called us to do. And Lord, if, if, <laughs> if we have uh, cut ourselves off from all the blessings and the benefits that we could experience because of our of habits that we have or choices we make or lies that we believe that aren't true at all and it just separates us from all the provision that you have for us uh, or we are just so far from doing your will that we're like lost in the forest and we don't even know it hardly God, open our eyes. Unstop our ears that we can hear. And like uh, Gary Carpenter <laughs> says, start praying in the Holy Spirit and then we can, we can make a beeline through the forest and chop down that tree that's right in front of us and make it, and make it onto the road of righteousness where we're supposed to be very quick instead of chopping down the whole forest trying to find, your, find our way out. Lord, we want to we want to lay down any weight, any sin that so easily besets us and run the race with endurance. We don't want to quit. We don't want to give up even if things get tough. And they might. They might get tough real soon here. I don't know. But we want to declare, Father, that even if it gets tough, Lord, we're going to rely on Your grace. We're calling on Your grace today to help us to accomplish whatever Your will is for us. So we say thank You, thank You, thank You for Your grace and Your mercy and Your truth and Your power and Your love and Your, uh, your amazing ability that You communicated to us. So, Father, we're listening, we're looking, we're, we're asking you, Lord, to have your way in us today. We thank you for revealing truth to us. I thank you for all the people that come across our path that you've directed us to, to like to the Sparrows Barn and to uh, uh, Andrew Womack and Bertie Brits and all these people who are, who are studying and calling on the name of Jesus and are, are preaching the Word of God and hearing your voice. I thank you for all these uh, men and women and little children and boys and girls all around the planet that you've taken to heaven and they've come back and they report on how good you are. That little gal that does all those beautiful paintings. Archiani, Chromeric, I don't know how to say her name. Sorry, sorry, honey. <laughs> so, I, I don't think I said it very well. But look, look that little girl up. She's made the most amazing, beautiful paintings of Jesus. She went to heaven when she was like three or four years old. And she writes the most amazing poetry. Look her up, Akiani. A-K-I-A-N-E, I think it is. But Father, I'm, I'm thankful for the revelation you've given us. I'm thankful that we are awake, that we are not asleep. We're children of the light instead of children of the dark and the darkness. Father, if there be any darkness in us, then expose it and remove it. And we want to shine the light on it. We want to reject all the devil's lies, all of his... We want to be like Jesus, uh, where the devil has no place in us. No niche, no little carved out spot where he has access to get his foot in the door <laughs> or whatever. 
what, what is it, the vampires, they, they can't come in unless you invite them in? Uh, that's usually how it works. Classic. So they uh, say. So I think, I think there's all kinds of, of uh, illustrations in the, in the world around us, in literature and in movies and, and in paintings and all this stuff that you've given us clues. So Father, we don't want to invite the devil in. We want to keep him out. And wherever he's snooked us, and we don't recognize that it's him, that he has, de he's a, what's the word say? He's decide, disguised himself as an angel of light. Mm -hmm. Angel of light. And he's, he, we think, oh, it's so beautiful. It's so wonderful. No, here you go. Don't look at the light. <laughs> don't look at the light. Nemo. No, it's uh, a bug's life. Oh, we're we're very gullible, Jesus. We really are. Great movie we got you. We're very weak in our flesh. So, Father, we're not we're not counting on our strength one hair. I'm not counting on strong being strong one bit. I'm counting on Jesus and the grace of God flowing and operating in my life, that He's the only answer, not me. <laughs> no. Our desire is to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, Jesus. Teach us Your Word. Give us revelation today. God, let today be the, a day of tremendous revelation that we see clearly today, better than we ever have before. And then we act on it. It's one thing to see it, but it's another thing to do it. So we, want to, we want to act on your revelation today, Lord. That's what we want to do. So I thank you. I thank you for our family. I thank you for our parents and our grandparents and our, the people who loved on us and prayed for us people who went before us so we want to we want to do the same for those who are coming after us uh, I want to leave these recordings for any if if well, we get raptured out of here and we're gone or I should say when we get raptured out of here and we're gone uh, I want some some uh, resource for people to come behind us and and give their hearts to Jesus and even though it'll be a terrible time on the earth, and there'll be terrible, awful, horrible things happening, hang on to Jesus. Call on the name of the Lord and you'll be saved. Don't take the mark of the beast. Don't take anything that messes with your DNA. Don't allow any, anything to be implanted or printed on your body. Or, or your, chem, the, your body chemistry altered. Don't allow it. The devil's trying to create us uh, an aberrant species. He's trying to cre he's trying to mess up the genome that God has created. Just, no matter what it costs, no matter what it, what happens, don't allow Satan to alter your body in any way. Or if it's or, or if it's a soul tie or whatever, I don't know what the mark of the beast is going to be. I don't know. Father, our desire is to, is to do Your will, O oh God. We want to we come with You and accomplish whatever Your desire is. So we say this morning, Kingdom of God come and will of God be done on earth just like it is in heaven. As far as me and my house, we will serve the Lord Jesus. We want to come after You, Father. Uh, rearrange our thoughts, rearrange our schedules, rearrange our priorities, whatever is required, Lord. If we're headed down the wrong road, Father, we want to turn around and uh, give us a map <laughs> to lead us back to where we're supposed to be. Well, we're, we're going we're gonna to call on Your name, Jesus. We're going to call on Your uh, Spirit, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we're going to yield ourselves to You today. 
we're going to uh, love the person that's right in front of us. I'm going to love my wife and my son, my grandson, my daughters, uh, my relatives, my anyone who needs our help today. Uh, Father, I ask for a favor as I go with my daughter to the uh, to the bank and to the lawyer to take care of this trust fund and get it lined up properly today. And if anyone has stolen anything. Uh, from my grandson that they have to return it uh, with interest, with uh, damages, so to speak. So, Father, I thank you uh, that you allow us to stand for what is right and give us strength and courage to love people and to do what is necessary to enforce the purchase price that you've given for us for this salvation so great a salvation that you purchased for us that we take a stand and we exercise our jurisdictional authority and we do what is right so I say thank you Father for your great love, wherein you loved us. And we want to rejoice today, we want to sing, we want to laugh, we want to encourage one another, we want to experience your grace and your mercy and your truth. All the joy that you've set before us. Help us with our peak eight this morning. <laughs> pray, Father, once again for this list of folks. We want to encourage all the families that have contact with us. And Lord, and if, if you can expand our sphere of influence and we can help other people, then we'll be glad to do that too. Uh, if we're supposed to be hooked up with some fellowship of, of Christians around here, and that's your will and that's what we're supposed to do, then boy, let's do it, Father. Let's hook up. Show us where to go. Uh, who we're supposed to be uh, intertwined with. Who knows? You said a threefold cord is not easily broken. We don't want to be by ourselves, Lord. We want to be hooked up with brothers and sisters. Uh, I, I'm just not interested in religion, and I'm not interested in somebody's weird view of, of reality. Um, if there's places around here that we could go that would we could facilitate the kingdom of heaven. And we would we'd love to, Father. Surely there's someone that we don't have to drive to Winston-Salem or drive to some far, city far away. Surely there's someone who's interested in doing the will of the Lord that's close by. Thank <laughs> you.
we'll say goodbye to our YouTube friends uh, so we can pray for this list and, and keep their names private in case they wouldn't enjoy being prayed for on the internet. Although I spoke uh, to one of these families last night and they were very moved to tears, really, that we would remember their names in the morning and call them out before the Lord. So, Father, I, I know that you love us way more than we could ever imagine. And we want to learn how to love, so. Uh, YouTube, uh, if anyone's listening, you guys have a great day. Uh, hear God's voice today. Experience His pleasure. Experience His love and His joy. Uh, call on the name of the Lord. Receive what He's done for you. There's nothing you can do to save yourself. All you can do is receive what Jesus has already done for you and just say thank you. So have a wonderful day.